New battery technology set to be mass produced by the end of this year by three of the world's largest battery companies means it's very likely that a number of battery factories built by Legacy Auto will be obsolete and almost useless by the time they actually start mass producing batteries. For those of you who still doubt that LFP batteries are the battery chemistry of the future and that they will take over the majority of the battery industry within the next five years, as they already have in China, here is some interesting news proving what is happening and showing you just how much better LFP batteries have gotten over the past few months and how much better they will become by the end of this year. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to the channel, all you new subscribers. Welcome back. Everyone else, I hope you've had an awesome day, an awesome week, an awesome year. You know what? If you're not already excited, surely these numbers have to excite you. They excite me. LFP batteries. Everyone says, yeah, they're great. You can charge them. In fact, I just spoke to a couple of Tesla representatives today at the Tesla store, and they were going on to me saying how great their standard range Tesla cars are, they charge them to 100%. In fact, they said they charge them to 98% because you don't get any regen braking if you charge for 100%. So there's a little tip for you. Charge to 98%, you can still get regen on your LFP Tesla standard batteries. But they were saying how great they were, right? And I was saying how great I think they are. And as you guys know, I've ordered a car with LFP batteries as well. Of course, there is still one slight drawback. That is the energy density of LFP batteries is quite a bit lower versus NCA. NMC, etc. Lithium turner. Let's just call them lithium turnery batteries. But is it? Is it really? Well, if it is, it won't be for long. Why? Because LFP battery chemistries are set to be have a higher energy density than lithium turnery batteries, potentially by the end of this year. And I'm talking not just small little samples here and there, not just laboratory samples. I'm talking mass manufactured mass manufactured batteries on mass i'm talking hundreds of gigawatt hours let's start with catl you might have seen my video talking about catl's new batteries the video talked about catl's new lithium ion phosphate batteries and it also talked about catl's new cell to pack technology which will enable them to have a 13 percent higher energy density than tesla's 4680 structural packs insane don't know if i believe that that's what CATL are claiming. But in the same press release, they also said that their new LFP batteries coming out this year will have an energy density around about 28% higher at 160 watt per kilogram. Already this year, we've seen Tesla's battery packs with LFP cells improve their energy density and their size and therefore give these standard range Tesla cars more range. Big advantage big advantage. But I mean, when they improve by 28%, that advantage is going to increase significantly. And this is the world's largest battery company. Pretty much all of their LFP batteries by the end of this year that they're producing will have that higher energy density. So that's a start. However, a Chinese battery manufacturer who just unveiled some very, very interesting and compellingly priced storage solutions for residential and commercial solar systems, battery storage systems using lithium ion phosphate batteries, has announced its latest LFP technology, right? s -Volt claims they're gonna be the biggest battery company in the world. Yeah, they said that with a straight face, not gonna happen, but they do plan on building out hundreds of gigawatt hours of battery capacity over the next few years. So they'll definitely be one of the biggest, not the biggest, but they'll be a very, very big battery company producer, predominantly producing lithium iron phosphate battery cells and packs and storage systems for your house or your business which will be probably a fair bit cheaper than Tesla's options right now. Asphalt say they have reached 200 watts per kilogram with their LFP battery cells. And they claimed on the 28th of March, so two days ago, that those cells are now available to order. You can order right now 200 watt per kilo LFP battery cells from Asphalt. So yeah, Realistically, would you want, even buying a premium car, would you want to get NCA or NCM chemistry batteries? Or would you prefer to get LFP batteries, which you know have going to last you probably, give you three times as many cycles. You can charge them to 100%, discharge them to whatever you want. doesn't make any difference. Fast charge them more often. I think it's just a no-brainer, right? So LFP already at 200 watts per kilo. Sounds great. In addition to that, with their cell-to-pack technology, where battery packs don't have modules, 
For example, a GCTP or gravimetric cell to pack ratio of 90% is standard. So this means that 200 watts per kilo at the cell level therefore becomes 180 watts per kilo at the pack level. That's impressive. However, s -Volt says that next year, its new version will be available, which have an energy density of 230 watts per kilogram, which is better than about 90% of the lithium ternary batteries available globally right now. So how exactly did Legacy Auto plan on competing with their ternary batteries, which have either less energy density or a similar energy density to lithium ion phosphate batteries, which are either on the market now or will be within 12 months? You can see the point here, right? You can see how Legacy Auto are going to have a lot of difficulty competing with these Chinese car makers who will be using these batteries, which cost a lot less money, aren't influenced by cobalt or price of nickel, and be mass manufactured in China for Chinese car companies. I honestly don't really understand why other car companies aren't using Lotus's strategy. Now, Lotus just brought out their new electric car, right? Well, where are they making it? In China. What are they going to do then? They're going to ship it from China everywhere around the world. Now, I know this sounds, um, it's not really the ideal scenario if we want to keep manufacturing in our countries. But if you want to exist in pretty much any industry outside of the car industry, you don't really have any choice other than to have what you make manufactured in China. Don't get me wrong, that's not the case for everything, but it is for most things. So I think that's a smart strategy to use in the future. Now, is this a one-off? Is it only one company doing this? No, it is not. Obviously, we've already talked about CATL, we've spoken about s -Volt, and now Guaxan High Tech, which Volkswagen, by the way, own about 25% of, have mass-produced LFP batteries with a 230 watt per kilogram energy density. Now, apparently, these new cells with 230 watts per kilogram energy density will start being manufactured towards the end of this year. And interestingly, there was a filing on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange showing that a contract has been signed with a US manufacturer for 200 gigawatt hours per year. 200 gigawatt hours per year. That is millions of EVs. And that contract was signed within the last few months. Now, I believe that contract was likely signed by Tesla, even though you're thinking, but Volkswagen owned 25% of the car company. Well, Volkswagen gave up their rights to voting on anything the company does around about a year ago or six months ago, I believe, when they increased their ownership percentage. They thought that was a good move. Maybe not. Anyway, if you're interested in that video I made about that deal, I'll put a link in the description below. Now let's have a look at Guaxan's energy density improvements. And this is pretty similar for most companies in the world when it comes to LFP batteries. Back in 2009, their LFP batteries were 95 watt per kilogram. Then in 2015, they hit 140 watt per kilogram. In 2019, they hit 190 watt per kilogram. In 2020, they hit 212 watts per kilogram or 191 watts per kilogram at the pack level. In 2021, they hit 230 watts per kilogram or 207 watts per kilogram at the pack level. And in 2022, they say they are developing new LFP batteries, which will be able to, in 2023, hit 260 watts per kilogram or 234 watts per kilo at the pack level. That is literally better than 95% of ternary batteries available on the market, maybe even more than that. So clearly, these batteries don't need nickel. They don't need rare earths. They don't need cobalt. They don't need manganese. They are much cheaper to manufacture. They last a lot, 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 lot longer. And they don't require you to be concerned when you fast charge your car that you're going to kill your battery or that when you charge your battery to 100%, you're going to degrade your battery. You don't have to worry about those things. In my view, they're the perfect solution. Now, interestingly, Guaxan, unlike its main competitors, CATL, BYD, and s -Volt, will produce its energy-dense LFP battery cells in a pouch format instead of prismatic format. Therefore, their battery packs will use modules and the ITM, or the jelly roll to module technology to achieve an impressive gravimetric cell to pack ratio of 90%, which is approximately the same, says Push EVs, as what we have in modern modulus packs with cell to pack technology. However, here is where things get absolutely insane. If you're still watching, well, <laughs> well, here is the crazy part. Guaxan said in early 2021 that with its JTM technology, its LFP batteries will have a similar cost to produce as lead acid batteries. 
lead acid. Yeah, it's not going to be long before, well, the entire world starts to recognize the fact that solar with batteries is significantly cheaper than coal power. And it will be. Here's what they said. JTM cost is close to lead acid battery. Its integration tech enables us to use one production line for all products and have one product to suit all platforms. Needless to say, surpassing 200 watts per kilo at the pack level, not just the cell level, at the pack level with a cobalt and nickel free chemistry that is safe, reliable, durable, and cheap is only a few months away. The world will be a better place as a result. And the electric cars you can buy will be cheaper and drive further than anyone really would have thought was possible. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.